I need to say, first of all, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I, as I say, I'm gonna, just going to crack on now. I can see a few of those names hit there and their um, regulars to our webinars. So really do appreciate you coming back and joining us each time. And as always, lots of new names. and That's great to see. So appreciate you joining, too. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to run a Q&A session at the end. Please add your questions into the chat as we go. We like to keep the webinar to a maximum of an hour and a half. So any questions not answered by the end of that time, we will come back to you after the webinar in the morning and um, answer those questions for you. And um, also please just, if, if you could, it'd be really helpful if when you send your questions through, you could just state if it's for Dale or Reese. I'd really appreciate that. Okay, so I think we've got a few people here now. Um, I'm just going to jump straight into it. So, okay, so welcome to this Fabric of Vest um, webinar. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us. I do hope you've had a wonderful summer. We're just catching the last of the rays here in the UK. I think we've literally got about three more days and then we're down to 12 degrees. So we're making the most of it. So the topic for the webinar is secrets to retiring early through property investment. We shall be showing you how to build a passive income prior to retiring, the different types of property investments, how pensions can assist with this, and the importance of financial planning. And also Dale will be speaking about Fabric Invest and what sets up truly apart from the rest. For those of you who don't know me, I am Lynn Whittingham, and I'm delighted to be asked to be the host for the Fabric Property Group webinars. And for everyone who stays till the end of the webinar, we're giving away a free gift. So please do stop to the end for the opportunity to claim this. And if I'm not mistaken, um, Dale always surprises me with an extra gift or two. So it's well worth waiting for at the end there. So without further ado, it gives me huge pleasure to introduce to you today from Fabric Invest, the Managing Director, Mr. Dale Anderson, and from One Financial Solutions, Reese Brown. As always, you're going to be given extreme value from these gentlemen this evening. Um, obviously, I've seen the presentation. It is absolutely jam-packed. So um, keep your pens and papers by the side. I'm sure you're going to be taking many notes this evening. So let's start with you, Dale. Dale has over 15 years of experience in the property investment industry and is a hugely trusted figure and well known for his honesty, integrity and professionalism. Dale has previously led and managed a team that sold 5,000 units and raised over £1 billion. Dale has experienced both the positive and the negative sides to property and certainly remembers the last property crash and how investors benefited. Dale's expert insights into the property investment market mean he's often featured in the media. As well as property news and magazines, Dale has also been interviewed by The Times, the BBC and the Daily Telegraph, to name but a few. And I have to say a personal um, thank you to Dale. It's an absolute pleasure to work with Dale. Always there, very supportive to our team. So thank you, Dale. Thank you, it gives me, okay. You're welcome. Um, and it gives me great pleasure also to introduce to you Reese Brown. Reese is an independent financial advisor who specialises in tax efficient investment and pension planning. He's been in the industry now for over five years and previously worked for one of the most successful practices at the largest wealth management company in the UK, FTSE 100 listed St. James Place Wealth Management. Rhys now runs his own boutique wealth management company, One Financial Solutions, and is here today to give us further insight into how to build and keep more of your wealth, which I'm sure you'll all agree that that's exactly what we want to do. So, Thank Dale, you. if I can now, you're welcome. Dale, if I can now hand over to you, please. Great. Thanks for the uh, kind introduction, uh... Uh, Lynn, and, and just back at you, it's a joy to work with Lynn. She actually manages and... Um, uh, our global agent network. So we've got agents based uh, overseas and all over, and Lynn does a really good job uh, with educating them and uh, hosting the webinars. So thanks, Lynn. Thank so, yeah, you. Today, today we wanted to discuss <clears throat> secrets to retiring early through property investments. 
obviously investing in property is a great thing and you know it's always good to diversify but what a lot of people don't think of is sort of long-term strategies and planning so okay i'm at this age now this is what pension i'm going to have in the future this is my current portfolio and, and actually building a bit of a roadmap on how you're going to get there and how you can achieve uh, you know passive income and financial freedom earlier so yeah we've put together a presentation um just a bit of an introduction to fabric invest uh, obviously, there's a lot of property investment companies out there to choose from. Um, what makes us different and sets us apart? Um, all the properties are asset-backed. Um, the developments under construction are typically fully funded. We study the markets. We look at prime locations for growth where there's good demand, and we believe there will be good scope for capital growth over the medium to long term. And we also focus on good quality builds, so high-quality new build property, they come with the usual 10-year build warranties uh, and all the right build material and cladding and, you know, just things like that. We, we vet the projects thoroughly. All the properties do offer fully managed solutions. So as we're discussing, you know, planning for retirement, you don't want to be too hands-on or be a time constraint. So each one of our developers either have their own in-house letting company um, or we can recommend a local letting company. We provide lifetime after sale support. We've just grown our team recently and we've got a, a really lovely lady, Nina Swano, who's joined us and she's dedicated to aftercare. I've worked with her for a number of years. So they'll hold your hand step by step, not just after buying the property, but ongoing in the future um, if you need any assistance from us. And again, all about security. We, we have a very thorough due diligence um, process in place in, in fact, I've, I've been told by many developers it's probably the most, well, the longest due diligence they've ever seen. And then getting lawyers to check things and our accountants and tax advisors just to make sure everything uh, is safe and secure as possible. Integrity and ethics at standard. So, you know, we do focus now on um, uh, new methods of, of construction, uh, eco friendly builds. Uh, you know, things that aren't going to have a massive impact on, uh, you know, the co your carbon footprint. And yeah, just, you know, treating the customers right and, and, and giving people um, across the board, uh, you know, a helping hand where needed when it comes to investing in property. We're a team of experts. So anyone we hire has normally a, a minimum of 10 years property investment experience. Um, our directors, <clears throat> between us, we've built a portfolio of over 50 properties ourselves. So we are also planning, um, you know, for retirement and, you know, we're investing in property and leveraging um, and making sure that the properties are cash flow positive. So again, fully comprehensive services, property management, tax, uh, if you need to get in touch with someone for financial planning, uh, such as Reese, you know, we've got people around us who can help you reach your property goals. And we also provide tailored and bespoke property strategy plans. So we'll go into a bit more depth, you know, if you, if you are looking to buy one property and maybe try and build a portfolio of five or 10 properties for retirement, you know, we can go through a step-by-step -step process on how you can reach those goals. Um, we also give a, a lot of free content away and not obviously the webinars um, and then also uh, guides for each location um, and guides around certain topics that, basically answer any questions you have, such as a buyer's guide, which will cover things like tax and stamp duty and the buying process. So a lot of our customers are also from, from overseas. We're a member of the UK Property Ombudsman and Office of Fair Trading Standards. So, you know, that's the official redress scheme for the property market. And it means we're fully regulated on that front. Trust pilots, don't take our word for it. So you can go check out reviews from genuine customers on Trust Pilots who've bought with us. Um, you know, we, we do have a lot of reviews saying that our approach is quite different and, um, you know, we do go over and beyond to make sure that the, the clients are supported uh, in the best possible way. So, so feel free to go have a look. Um, so enough about us. Uh, on to the topic, secrets to retiring early through property in the UK market. If you're aiming to retire early, property is a safe haven. You know, there's stocks and shares and bonds and various things. Bank interest is, is very low at the moment. Now, choosing a property can be quite daunting because there's a lot of property on the market. So, you know, you need to decide what's going to be the best strategy for you. Do you want to buy apartments, houses, um, you know, whatever's going to work best for you. So prices, just as an update, 
Um, we had recently the latest Zoopla housing report um, and HM land registry data for June showed property prices in the Northwest rose by around 18%. That London's a lot slower at about 6%. So what that's showing is that average prices in the North of England um, are far lower in the South and that's driving more demand for, for people buying up uh, in the North. So there's a bit of a chart here and that just shows your average house prices as of June. And as you can see, the Northwest uh, northeast and all these other areas and cities compared to the average of London uh, are a lot more affordable, but also we're seeing notice noticeable um, price jumps. And there's a big sort of south-north divide, I guess, uh, in these locations and where prices are, are increasing. We also have a look at the rental index. So the, the latest um, Zoopla housing index, for example, uh, has shown that there's been 5% annual changes in rent excluding London. London rents have actually decreased slightly at about 3.8%. So proper rentals are, are obviously it's very expensive. So, you know, people are being squeezed. I think a lot of people are moving out of London as well to more commutable towns, which could be a factor. And of course, affordability. So 32% affordability of salary to cover rent um, in the UK. It's currently taking about 15 days to um, uh, rent out property. And your monthly average rent in the UK can be anywhere from sort of 900 up to about 1,200 pounds. So definitely a surge in demand and an imbalance of rental property, which is pushing the rent prices up. And re London rents, on, on the other hand, have declined slightly. They, they seem to have bottomed a bit. Um, so, so yeah, so very interesting stats there from Zoopla. We're able to share that with you. And what that shows is the average annual UK uh, prices of, of rent have gone up by about 5%. five um, Obviously not great news for tenants when they're having to pay more rent, but certainly from a, a buy-to-let perspective, um, that could be something that's quite compelling news. Um, you can see by the chart, yeah. So on to the Dale, next can slide. Can I just um, interrupt a moment, please? I just thought um, if you just go back a slide, it might also be um, a good point to mention yeah. about the um, how Lloyds have invested in 50,000 new homes. Yes, this is something I was going to say. I uh, almost forgot. Thanks for reminding me, Lynn. We released a news article recently, um, which has been featured, and Lloyds Bank has now put their hat in the, in the ring with uh, the residential housing sector. So they're investing in 50,000 new homes. I think Lewis Denley as well are looking at 10,000 new homes. So what that tells me is we're in a market where there's a bit of inflation, you know, current currencies uh, values are maybe not what they used to be. You know, you've got cryptocurrencies confusing the, the banks and the markets as well. So we're seeing a lot of banks and institutional buyers hedging on the UK housing market. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that from, from your side, Rhys, uh, when Lloyd's Bank are coming in and investing in, in, in property in this way? Yeah, thanks, Dal. Um, I think it's a key indication that especially big institutions are looking to diversify their portfolios. Um, and previously, if we look at probably the last 30 years of investing, for diversification within a portfolio, banks and private investors would look at the four different asset types. So they would look at equity, they would look at fixed interest, which is bonds. Um, they would look at alternatives and you've also got cash as well. The problem is now is that because of the amount of quantitative ease or quantitative easing that's, that's come in into, into play, both in the UK, Europe, in the US, uh, and because of the way that, that bonds are linked to that, um, there's a lack of confidence in a bond's ability to diversify a portfolio well for the future moving forward. So this is why you see the big institutions diversifying more into assets that they know that they can trust long term. Um, and in a UK market that's undersupplied um, with, with property units, I think that's where the bank's confidence is in this case. So it looks like they're hedging against uh, property as a result of obviously quantitative easing, banks printing money, which can cause you know inflation, um, and uh, I guess bonds and gilts and you know interest in the banks not not doing that great at the moment. So it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. So so yeah. So just to move on to obviously we've discussed rentals. Uh, we've seen a lot of growth in um, certain areas, particularly outside of London. 
This is the latest Savills residential forecast. We have touched on this before, uh, but just wanted to flag up there. Savills has flagged up the Northwest as enjoying the best potential for price growth um, in terms of cities such as Liverpool, Manchester, um, you know, and other areas in the north such as Leeds and Sheffield are, seem to have some very good potential as well. So that's your chart there. Um, and that's a five-year projection from Savile, so 28% northwest. Uh, Yorkshire and Humber as well, 28%, and also Wales and Scotland uh, just below. The UK average that are expecting around 21% uh, percent, uh, over the next five years. Obviously, that's subject to economic conditions and bank interest rates, but certainly there's a shortage of housing which seems to be driving uh, the market. So on to how to build uh, income before retiring. So we've recently um, released a, um, uh, a guide and the guide will go into more detail, but just as a very quick sort of um, couple of points, the number one secret to investing, um, as far as we're concerned, is invest before you own. Now, just as a case study, my business partner, Steve Jacob, um, he started out on the, the typical path of, you know, work hard, save some money, get a residential home, you know, buy a nice home uh, for, to live in with your family. However, he quickly realized the potential of pulling that money out of his house, uh, you know, and releasing equity. And then he started to invest in property that way. Um, so, you know, he did actually end up living back at his parents at one stage, but he's now amassed a portfolio of 50 properties and he has a lovely house because of that. So one, one misconception is, you, you know, save, buy, buy a house as quickly as you can. Uh, we believe that actually investing in property prior to that could be a good bet, um, you know, especially if you do have the, the benefits of, uh, you know, some people are still living with their parents. Uh, <laughs> so it's a chance for them to save money and, you know, get on, get on the property ladder uh, as quickly as possible. So, yeah, and number two, um, consider the market fundamentals. So you really need to think about, you know, retirement's a blank sheet of paper. It's a chance to sort of redesign your life and plan for the future. So where are you going to put your money when you're older? How are you going to support yourself with old age? And, you know, a lot of these things you need to start planning uh, ahead. So questions we all come up with. And, you know, a lot of people do have their own financial advisors and uh, wealth managers who, who can assist them. But it's important to look beyond, uh, you know, certain things like, when you're buying a house, you should be looking at the data of where the renters are. So, you know, track down the renters, uh, think about the, the locations that are going to give you the best uh, return on investments. Places like Preston was ranked top of UK cities for return for landlords in August 2021. Now, not a lot of people are thinking of Preston. They're thinking Manchester and Liverpool and all these other areas. So, you know, if you actually do look un underneath that and, and do the research, you'll find that there are some hidden gems. Uh, highest regional prices increase in the UK in the year to June were 18%, according to HM Land Registry. So, again, just doing your, your due diligence and market research. Number three, um, you know, invest in buy to let. Before, uh, sorry, number four, don't be fooled by over promises. So, something we've always um, uh, looked out for is, you know, you do get investments out there and whether it's houses or property investment or stocks or shares or whatever it is if, if it sounds too good to be true it often can be so the higher the return the higher the risk now i've seen stuff out there offering double digits 10 percent rent guarantees for 10 years but when you look beneath the surface it's promised by a company who's probably not been trading very long uh it's more of an assurance rather than a than a guarantee so just make sure you do your due diligence and actually check the market rates um, and, you know, make sure that it does stack up. And worst case scenario, what are you left with as an asset and will that provide you the income uh, that you need? So, yeah, uh, number five, obviously track down the renters, as I mentioned before, the fundamentals of property investments, not just buying a property because of the price or the, the potential yield. You know, you might find something out in a more rural area and think, wow, that's a lovely piece of property. Um, and, you know, they say, the agent might tell you, well, you, it's because it's so cheap, you can probably get a 7% yield on it. The problem you have is what's the population in that rural area? How many empty properties are there? So you need to think about the, uh, the cities. I mean, we track um, 
uh, using uh, the Arla property market um, software. And basically the tracker ranked Manchester as the best city out of 50 locations for buy to let investments because of the demographic of young professionals and the growing population in Manchester. So make sure that you are where there is a high demand for tenants, a high number of renters and a low number of properties. Because what that means is you're going to end up uh, not having to worry about too many void periods for example, in Manchester, we've got um, a couple of developments there, and all of them are pretty much fully occupied uh, within the first two years. So, so definitely track down where the, the renters are rather than the, the shiny objects and, and the cheap properties in, in the more rural areas. You want to look at where the fundamentals are for the demand. Um, yeah, number six, choose, choose the right agents. You know, if you're going to be investing in property investment for retirement, some people like to be hands-on and be involved and you know, buy property that's maybe a bit run down and needs to be fixed, but it can be a lot of headaches. So what you don't want is a sort of time drain because you want to be enjoying life and uh, doing what you should be doing at retirement, which, which is relaxing or traveling or, you know, so, so these are the factors to consider. And what we'll do is make sure uh, there's, property management in place. We work with well-established award-winning management companies so they can deliver a sort of hands-off investment approach for you. Obviously, there will be a management fee on uh, with that as with any property investment, but certainly, you know, if you can get it fully managed and still get a 5 or 6% net yield um, and not have to worry about anything other than, you know, maybe picking up the phone once in a while to get an update, then... Um, yeah, just uh, that's something we think is quite important, especially if you're planning for retirement. So, um, Dale, can I just ask you, can you go back into full screen, please? Yeah, I've noticed I've okay. just gone off full screen. Thank you. There we go. So, yeah, so I think I've covered everything there on the six steps uh, or secrets to investing um, in, in property. Investment property also that doesn't just mean buy to let, consider diversification. So, uh, you know, residential apartments are great in the city centre. However, some investors like to mix it up. Um, hotels, there's, there's hotel investment options, uh, care homes, student accommodation, uh, commercial property, retail space. So there's other things you can think of within your portfolio. And sometimes it is good to diversify. Um, just as an example, we... Um, uh, we're currently looking at a investment product which is based around <clears throat> the holiday markets. So staycations are booming in the UK, uh, naturally with, with COVID and travel restrictions. You know, holiday parks have always been quite popular. And uh, yeah, we've got some background uh, data from Savile saying that, you know, these lodges are currently yielding in excess of 8 9%. So again, there's other types of assets out there um, that you could potentially look at such as short-term lets uh, or Airbnb apartments, which could potentially give you uh, a higher uh, yield. So, so, yeah, those are things to consider. And also one thing with, the, with what we like about the alternative assets, there can be advantages such as um, uh, stamp duty savings. And you can also get, there's tax advantages where you can deduct expenses uh, and tax advantage uh, so from a pension contribution um, standpoint as well. So uh, on that front, um, Reese, with regards to uh, SAS or SIPs, is, is that um, these types of commercial property, could you just enlighten us on that a little bit or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, SAS is a growing market. Um, SIPs also allow you to invest, uh, invest in, in commercial property. Um, and that is really using your pension in a tax efficient vehicle to make sure you can benefit from commercial units um, without the heavy tax liabilities that we have to face here as, as UK residents. There's going to be a lot more on that subject later. And I've got a, um, a friend who's going to be able to add a lot more value coming on board. So a bit of a special release for the audience, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely a growing area of interest. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, quick word on pensions. We, we did a bit of uh, market research. The average UK pension pot at the moment, obviously this is broadly speaking and, and can vary, vary uh, depending on different people or, or where, where you're from in the world, uh, you know, but this is just on a UK basis. Average UK pension pot is now £42,651. 
your average retirement age is 65 for men and 63 for women. Uh, average life expectancy stands at 79 for men and uh, 83 years uh, for women in the UK at the moment. And 15 years to 18 years is the average pension pot would need to last 15 years for men and 18 years for women. So the average uh, amount you need to live comfortably, and this will, again, depending on your lifestyle and what you like and what you do, but the, the sort of minimum average for a two-person retiree household is 26,000 to 41,000 pounds. So without it sounding scary, the reality is if you're solely relying on your pension, it's quite clear there that you can see, you know, 42,000 or even 60 or 80,000 is not going to last you for 15 or 18 years, um, you know, and people are living longer. So it's not something I, I enjoy discussing, but it is something we need to factor in because you need to make sure you plan ahead and whether that's for leaving a legacy for your children or your family or just making sure that you can live comfortably uh, at retirement, property can, of course, uh, provide that uh, solution. So why is property a better investment um, than other investments? Pensions are obviously just not going to cut it with the uh, the amount of um, the average pensions, you know, having to last you long enough. And let's face it, not everybody wants to live on the bread line. You know, we would like to live comfortably and enjoy enjoy your retirement. Property provides you a regular rental income and rental yield. So not only are you getting the passive income on the rent, but you can then in five or 10 years, sell up the property and, and take out the capital uh, and the equity. Property in the UK benefits from capital growth. It can be sold for marginal profits. Uh, prices have uh, on average doubled um, every 10 years in the UK. Investors are able to borrow at significantly low borrowing rates at the moment. So we're in a, an environment of record low borrowing rates. Now, what that means is if you get a good tenant in your property, usually your tenant is paying your debt, basically and you're still left with a little bit of cash flow. So make sure it's cash flow positive, and that's something we can help with with regards to getting in touch with the mortgage or, or, or bond provider uh, and discussing what rates they can, uh, they can get you. So your tenant's paying off your debt, and that, that ensures that it's cash flow positive. For the next 5, 10, 15 years, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and uh, yeah, all the debt's been paid by the, by the tenant. Why is the UK an attractive country? Obviously, we've got one of the most transparent and technologically advanced economies, favorable business environments with evergreen talent, and uh, demand is outstripping supply. Um, I'll just touch on this briefly. This is a, a chart that we put together, the average house prices in the UK since the 1980s. Um, and as you can see, the how the prices of gradually gone up over time. So over the last 30 years, roughly 150,000 properties have been built each year, but the government needs to build about 250,000 a year to meet up with demand. So there's a, def a deficit, um, and that's further compounded the problem, along with a, a growing population. Uh, we're a relatively small country, um, and therefore Savills project some you know, good positive growth over the next five years. So I'm going to hand you over to Reese with the uh, uh, on the importance of efficient tax and financial planning. Um, I thought I'd get Reese on. I'm obviously not a financial advisor, um, so we we do recommend speaking to a financial planner regarding tax or financial planning. Uh, and yeah, I'll pass it over to uh, over to Reese. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dal. Um, big hi to the audience. I think this is probably. The first time a lot of you have seen my face, um, so I'm sorry about that. And uh, I hope that everybody's geared up for an extremely boring next 10 minutes. Uh, no, I'm joking, of course. Look, I've got 10 minutes to get through everything that we want to speak about today. You can see on the screen that we're going to be speaking about tax efficient investing to complement property portfolios. Um, we're also going to be going through inheritance tax planning things to think about when you're, when you're building a property portfolio as well. Um, key planning points and really good planning starts starts early in this field, in any field, but especially for a property investor. Um, and then I've got uh, a guest that's going to be coming up from the audience, James. He is a SaaS expert. Um, he works for Day Cooper Day. And instead of me letting you know 
you know, the, the surface level, which I understand about this very niche uh, element of the pensions market, I thought would be much more value to bring by bringing on somebody that specializes in that field. So hopefully we'll get notes from James as well. Uh, Dow, if you can flip through. Um, so forget what you know about financial advice. Okay, typically a financial advisor is seen as somebody that comes around once a year for a cup of tea and a biscuit, sits down, says your money's come up uh, or your money's gone up in value or your money's gone down in some cases, depending on the year. Um, that's great. Have you got any more money to put in? No, okay, no problem. I'll see you next year. That is very old school. Uh, and it's something that I'm completely get away from, from uh, through my process. There's just so much more to be done. And we're gonna be going through the elements on a very high level, as much as I can get through today, just the key planning points that I think is really relevant to people that are invested or thinking about investing in property. So ready when you are, Dal? Okay, so the key points of consideration. Um, basically, we all hate the tax man, or 90% of us do. Um, he, he's not our favourite person, especially here in the UK. Feels like you're, you're taxed for blinking. Um, what I'm going to be going through, we're not talking about, you know, accounts in the Isle of Man and, you know, popping over to Panama to make sure that, that you've got special accounts everywhere. It's about utilising the allowances that are available here in the UK to make sure that you grow your wealth, but also you keep it. And the reason for that is because there's a massive negative effect of compounded tax over an accumulation period which is your build up to retirement and then a decumulation period, which is obviously retirement until mortality. OK, so it's no secret here in the UK. We've got income tax, capital gains tax and inheritance tax. These are the three probably biggest problems for a, uh, a property investor. A big problemo, as you can see on the screen. Um, so income tax, very quick overview. So your personal income tax allowance here in the UK is £12,570 per annum. That's the amount that you can receive for free without paying any tax, okay? If you're employed, anything over that, up to 50K, is taxed at 20%. Anything between 50K and 100K is taxed at 40%. And anything above 150K is taxed at 45%, okay? Which is, you know, pretty hefty. That's not including national insurance contributions, of course, which... I think up to 50K is about 12% at the moment. So you can see how much of an effect this has on your wealth. For a business owner, it's slightly better if you're taking uh, dividends. So between 12, 570, 50K, 7.5%, up to 150K, 32.5%, and above that is 38.5%. Okay, CGT, annual allowance is 12,300. 20% uh, CGT over that amount for most assets. But because the government saw that so many people were, you know, qu enjoying quite a nice life through investing in property, they decided to hike it up to 28%. So you're slightly more penalised. Um, inheritance tax as well. I mean, I'm not going to go too deeply into all of the things around inheritance tax because it is a huge, huge area to consider. But just the bare basics. Um, there's an, uh, an ill-rate bound allowance for everybody in the UK at £325,000. And that's, to, that's the amount that you can pass down to your children without seeing any tax. For couples, it's £500,000. So you get what's called a residence nil rate bound allowance for couples. And the second person that dies or passes, in, um, passes wealth down to their children, they get a further 175 k on top of the 325 Okay. <laughs> So 40% tax over that amount, it's a huge amount, you know, especially if you're going into the millions. If you do get to the point where you've got millions in property, it's going to be taxed very heavily depending on your inheritance tax plans. OK, so this slide is hugely important. OK, so hopefully you can see it's a bit small on my screen um, and some of you are going to be thinking, what the hell is this graph all these pretty colors you know it, it, it looks quite jargony but bear with me so if we can see on the left hand side we've got two graphs here okay the first graph at the top is the base plan and this is a case study it's actually an existing client of mine um and this was their graph when they met me this is what we call a cash flow forecast okay and it's very very um 
it's very intricate, this modeling software that we use. It takes into account all the taxes in the UK, the different products, everything involved. So it really gives us a real clear picture to then project out on. This graph, just so you know, is projecting out on a 5% growth rate per annum, okay? Um, and a 2.5% inflation rate per year. Okay, so what that means is if you've got an investment growing at 5% and there's 2.5% inflation, bringing it up to half, it's a real term asset growth rate or a real return of 2.5% per year. So very, very conservative, okay, is what I'm trying to get across to you. Now, if we look at the top hand graph, you can see that the client's age in the bottom left hand corner is 42. Okay. And it runs, this timeline runs all the way through to age 100. I hope you can see that. Uh, Dow and Lynn, if you can give me a thumbs up if you're following and if that's clear, that'd be great. Okay, lovely. So every bar here represents a year in a client's life. Okay. The dark blue section in the top graph is employment income. So the couple that we've got invested here earn quite a healthy income. They earn over 300,000 pounds a year. You can see the pink income here at the top of the blue. That represents, and throughout the entire graph, that represents property income that they're already receiving. So these couple are fortunate in the fact that they have properties in France. They're originally French nationals. And they also have property here in the UK. And they've got a total of about 50K per annum that they receive in rental as profit. So doing fairly well. Um, you can see the most important line in this graph, if you can follow, is the black line that you can see in between the blue and the pink. Hopefully you can see that throughout the graph, runs all the way through. And this represents all of the client's expenses year on year including tax, including everything from their BT subscription to the food they eat, right the way through to inheritance tax, capital gains, everything, okay? You can see at age 55, this is when the client would like to retire from, from the job in, in the city. And you can see it drop significantly, their financial need drop significantly. And that's because they've stopped paying as much tax because they're no longer earning that income from their salaries, their income tax has dropped significantly, significantly, okay? Now, following on to the bottom graph, this is the advised plan, okay? And you can see there's not much difference. In fact, they look fairly similar. The black line in the bottom graph is, is uh, has been used up more, and that's because we're putting to work some of their uh, surplus funds. OK, so we're investing further to make sure that we can incorporate some tax free growth. Uh, you can see also there's a bit of yellow running through from retirement all the way through. And th in this case, this represents asset liquidation on a tax free basis. OK, the big thing that we're trying to do for any investor at all times is how can we get tax free returns on investments? in the accumulation phase and especially in the decumulation phase. I've got clients at the moment that are in decumulation, so in retirement, and they're receiving family income, so husband and wife incomes of a total of £120,000 a year, and they pay absolutely no income tax, okay? And this is because we've started planning at the right time. Dow, if you could just flip to the next slide. So what is the impact of using the right investment vehicles at the right time? Uh, the way I explain my role, just very quickly, is uh, almost a golf caddy, okay? So even the best golfers in the world have a caddy. Tiger Woods has a golf caddy. And the reason for that is because my job is not to swing the club for you. My job is to tell you how, how far away the hole is, what club I think you should take, what the wind's doing, if there's any hazards in the way, trying to give you the easiest path to, to grow in your wealth, if that makes sense. And that's really the good, that's the role of any good consultant, to be honest. The graph here that you're looking at, okay, if you just take a look at the top hand graph, what this, th this graph is showing is instead of cash flow, this is detailing the liquid assets that the client has at any one time, okay? So the impact of using the right products at the right time, what does it have? The top hand graph, you can see at age 100, 
the client retire or let's say he lives until 100 hopefully fingers crossed um the client has a wealth of nearly seven million pounds okay by using the right products at the right time not no increase of investment no um optimization of any of the pensions or anything like that just using the right tax products at the right time we've increased the client's potential wealth by four million pounds okay or getting on for four million anyway maybe ju just under oh it's just over actually excuse me okay and this is the real what i'm trying to illustrate here this it won't be the same case for everybody some people's wealth might be smaller some people's wealth might be bigger some people might be at a different stage of life it is very intricate but it's using the right vehicles at the right time for the right result and my biggest con my biggest concern here is how can we minimize your tax yeah so you can keep more of your wealth Dow, if you could go to the next slide for me please so how was this achieved? In the case of this client, uh, the, the client's got an income tax allowance, obviously, of 12,570, okay? Um, through his property, he's gonna be exceeding that. We know that he's already at 50K right now, and that's projected to grow, obviously, until retirement, okay? So pre predominantly, we're looking at the decumulation phase here. So if we've got an income of 12,000, uh, if we've got an income of 50K from property at this time, or let's say it's grown to 75K, and we've only got an allowance of 12,560, that means we've got roughly 30 to 40K at that time that's going to be subject to income tax. That's a big problem. Okay, so how do we mitigate that? The client has also got a pension. He still works for a company. Okay, and the big thing, the key thing about pensions is knowing what to contribute and when to stop. This is what a lot of people don't talk about, okay? Now, in the UK especially, we have a lifetime allowance in the pensions, okay? So once you reach, it's now a million and 77,000, I believe. Anything over that, that you have in your pension, on drawdown, you, you have quite a hefty tax charge, okay? When you get to retirement or actually from age 55 now every pension in the uk you have access to 25 percent of it tax-free okay now you can either access that pension as a entire tax-free 25 percent lump all in one go or you can tier that year on year to feed a tax-free income and that will be different depending on clients needs some clients want to go to vegas bali dubai and have a real great year in their, their, their early years in retirement before they get old and dribbly. Um, and some clients would like to, you know, preserve their wealth a little bit better throughout. And, and that choice is down to each and everyone individually. Okay. But knowing when to stop contributing into the pension is a big one. The great thing about pensions, and as James will um, conclude when we get onto the SAS pensions, is if you are a property nut, and I mean you don't trust the financial markets. You don't understand them well enough to have confidence in them, but historically you've got a great knowledge in property, especially commercial property. You can use your pension to tax efficiently invest into property, commercial units. There are also benefits like loan backs from the scheme if you've got limited company ent uh, entities. So there are a lot of benefits. I'm gonna leave it there because I don't wanna steal James's funder, but the pension was used throughout the plan, okay? Now ISA. The next one, ISAs are an absolutely spectacular vehicle, okay? It stands for Individual Savings Account, and it, that, it is very much that. Imagine it like a, a Snickers wrapper, okay? The Snickers wrapper protects it from all tax. You can input to, um, to your ISA, and you've got a limit of £20,000 per annum, okay? Now, not everybody's going to have the, the money to be able to contribute £20,000 per annum in the UK, but the great thing is, Unlike a pension where you don't have access until 55, you always have access to your ISA, okay? You can dip in and out whenever you want, okay? Which is fantastic. It's completely tax-free growth in the ISA, which is also a big plus, and it's completely tax-free drawdown as well. So all the money you make in your ISA in the accumulation phase, when you take money from it, you can take as much as you want. So that also becomes, along with the personal allowance, the pension, um, tax-free drawdown of 25%. And then you've got the ISA allowance. You can start to see how we're building up layers 
of tax-free drawdown in retirement. And it's easier to understand how families are receiving 120K a year, 150K a year tax-free, depending on their wealth. Okay. The next product that this client used is called a general investment account. Uh, it can be stuff like uh, unit trusts, can be OICs. I'm not going to go into the deep dive of it. But very generally, there's quite something quite strategic about this vehicle. And it's because we want to use the capital gains tax vehicle. OK, now, uh, sorry, the capital gains tax allowance. So the capital gains tax allowance, as we uh, as we confirmed, it's actually uh, £12,300 per annum, I think. That is uh, a typo. The reason that you would only fill this product up to 150k is because you would fill it with investments that only receive growth. Okay, so no dividends. We don't want anything else coming into the income tax variable. Okay, we want it purely for capital gains. And at the end of the year, let's say we achieve a modest return of seven and a half percent, eight percent. That investment of 150k grows by, let's say, bang on 12,300 pounds. You let the cream rise to the top, the 12,300 pounds. You cut the top of the cream off. You take that out as a tax free capital gains withdrawal, and then you reinvest that either into the ISR or the pension. One thing I forgot to mention about the pension regardless of whether you've got a business or whether you're self employed, you get tax relief on the contributions for your pension. So if you're employed in the UK, you get tax relief depending on your tax band. If you're a 20% taxpayer, you get 20% tax relief on the contribution, 40% taxpayer, 40%. And of course, I, I think you can understand by now, 45% taxpayer, you get a 45% tax relief on the contribution, up to a limit of 40,000 pounds, depending on how much you earn, okay? these sort of vehicles that really help you to build your wealth and if you're a property nut and you want to benefit from making a contribution of ten thousand pounds into your pension if you contribute ten thousand pounds and the net cost of that is only five thousand five hundred pounds as a 45 percent taxpayer you can then put that money into your SAS pension and then use it within commercial property to grow your wealth further OK, so I know I'm rattling. There's a hell of a lot of information coming out of my mouth. And I know it makes sense to me because I do it day in, day out. But please try and stay with me. Take a sip of coffee, a shot of Lucas Aid, whatever you need to do. We're going to get through it. Now, the most interesting vehicle today that we're going to speak about and venture capital trusts um, are one of them. There, there are other investment vehicles which are more high risk. So you've got enterprise investment schemes and also seed in, in Seed in Enterprise Investment Schemes, SEIS. The reason that venture capital trusts are my particular choice is because although they're a high risk investment, they're a hell of a lot less racy than the rest of the investments. And let me explain why. So you can see the big draw on that initially is 30% income tax relief per year. Let me explain a bit further about how this magical vehicle works. Dow, if you could go to the next slide. Okay, so venture capital trusts are especially applicable to people who've got big property incomes. Okay, a venture capital trust, they, they're um, government backed vehicles that give you income tax relief based on your contribution. So you get income tax relief. Let's say you've got a, a, a property portfolio that kicks out £30,000 per year. If you bank that £30,000 a year and you're still earning from another job, and you invest it into a venture capital trust, for that tax year, you get 30% tax relief on that £30,000 contribution. So you'd get £9,000 worth of tax relief on that £30,000 income that you'd receive from the property portfolio. The benefit of a, a venture capital trust also is that there's tax-free growth within the, the, the portfolio. So very much like an ISA, all the growth you see is completely free of tax and very much uh, like the ISA as well, all the dividends that you receive in a venture capital trust is completely tax free also, okay? Now, when you start to say, when you speak to a lot of people in the UK and you say there are investments government backed that will give you 30% income tax relief, sometimes, you know, people say, well, that's not true, it can't be done. But these are gen genuine vehicles out there. And the reason that the government has set this up is because they want to 
Um, they want to encourage investment into smaller, unlisted companies in the UK. Okay. So back about 16, 17 years ago, when uh, venture capital trusts began, they began extremely high risk. What you would generally invest in is a portion of three companies that were in startup phase and that needed investment. You have to keep this investment with the venture capital trust for five years in order to retain the income tax relief that you receive, okay? So it's a five-year investment. Um, that was obviously very high risk because if you had three startup companies and one failed or two of them failed, it had a real detrimental effect on your wealth, okay? Obviously, if you're only backing three companies and one of them fall, you know, it's a 33% drop if you're split, split evenly. Now, they've matured significantly throughout the process. There are some great providers out there. One of my personal favorites is Octopus Investments. They're, they're the market leader by far. And the reason that this vehicle is, is so good is because instead of having three companies now, some of the biggest VCTs in the market invest against probably 90, 95 different companies. And these vary in size. So if we look at the bottom grow, uh, bottom of the page, normally about 10 to, five, uh, 10 to 15% in a venture capital trust is cash. So held in cash, so new investment. And they have an investment period every year. The smaller companies here you can see in red represent new investments into the VCT. Okay. The slightly larger companies that you can see, the next uh, sort of orange variables, are, have grown. So that arrow represents a company that has grown through seed investment through the venture capital trust. Okay. And as we can see, they process further and further along right to the end where you've got mammoth companies. And when I say mammoth companies, I'm talking about companies worth billions of pounds. So you might have heard of companies like Kazoo. You might have heard of uh, Kazoo is a secondhand car dealer. You see the adverts everywhere here in the UK. You might have heard of companies like Secret Escapes. They do holidays online. You might have heard of companies like Depop, which is a secondhand clothes brand. All of these companies received investment at the start from venture capital trusts. And as they grow, they kick out dividends tax-free. They kick out growth tax-free. Um, and for investing in their companies early on, you receive 30% income tax relief. Okay. Now, because the VCT market has matured so much, as somebody that's got a large income and has got an investment portfolio of property that's kicking out a higher amount of income tax per year, this venture capital trust product, especially some of the larger ones, depending on your attitude towards risk, can be spectacular for mitigating the, the income tax that you're going to be uh, subjected to here in the UK. Okay. Now, I understand that I speak very quick. Obviously, you can see probably that I'm quite passionate about this. The real thing that I want to get to you is that everybody's plan is different here. That what's right for somebody is not right for another. You have to understand your attitude towards risk. It's very important that you don't necessarily need an advisor for this, but it's very important that you understand where you are right now, where you're trying to get to, and what is the path of least resistance. How can we get to build your wealth? How can we keep the money from the tax man, keep it in our back pocket and make it work for you in the future? The big benefit here is when you're doing tax-free drawdowns from all of these different products, the more you keep in the pension at this point, pension passes directly to your beneficiaries of your pension, completely free of inheritance tax, okay? So the idea is that you're drawing down on other areas to make sure that your pension is left for children if that is something that you'd wanna do or charity or whatever is personally applicable to you. What I hope I've been able to, to display here without boring everybody to tears is there's a hell of a lot of planning and a hell of a lot to consider when building portfolios and really trying to build your wealth like high net worth and the people in the know do. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. I'm happy to give all the information for free. I'm not here to ask for clients. I'm here to support and hopefully really share some value. Um, but yeah, if you need anything from me, if you've got any questions, please reach out and let me know. And I hope you, you found this impactful. Thanks, uh, Reese. That's really interesting and something that I certainly need to start looking at. 
uh, more seriously. I think you delay the, tend to delay these things and, uh, you know, you've got properties and investments, but uh, you need to think about all the tax implications and, and, and planning ahead. So thanks for that. And are we going to get James on uh, quickly to discuss the... We are. Um, we are. The, uh, the sasses. Um, Let me quickly. find him very quickly in the audience. So James, I, I told you we was going to tell you a little bit more about SAS from, from somebody that is really an expert in that field. SAS, uh, a small self-administrated scheme, is very niche, um, but very, very powerful if you understand how to work it, okay? Especially for some of you property nuts out there. James is uh, who I, I rely on, basically, for this information. My clients all go to James. Faye Cooper Day is the company that he works for. I'm just trying to find him now. I've unmuted him. Yeah, he's with, he's with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, got him already. Perfect. I'm going to hand you over to him uh, and let him introduce himself a bit further. So thank you, James. Oh, thank, thank you very much for, for having me. It's much appreciated. Uh, so as we said, my name's James. I work for a, a company called Day Cooper Day. Um, we're SAS specialists. So we deal specifically in one, uh, as we said, very niche form of pension schemes. Uh, so SASs are occupational schemes uh, that are established by um, limited companies, uh, normally owner-manager businesses um, that want to have a little bit more control um, over what they want to do with their pension and make it work a little bit more for themselves um, over the course of uh, their accumulation phase or their retirement phase. Um, so each one is a multi-member scheme, so it can have 11 members or 11 people involved in the scheme, so it allows for not only investing in individuals pension, but grouping together people in families or senior employees of companies. So I'd like to have that little bit more buying power if you wanted to go for the slightly bigger things um, investment wise, which lends in quite nicely to when you're looking at things like property. So um, as, as you've heard today, property is quite popular and that's uh, extremely true when you're looking at pensions as well. So uh, SAS pensions are able to invest very heavily into commercial property, whether that be warehouses or, or indeed just land themselves. Um, now the vehicle itself, the SAS vehicle as a pension scheme, um, when you buy investments in any investment growth, any investment returns that you're getting within that pension scheme are tax free. So you're not gonna be paying any income tax or any capital gains tax on any kind of growth that you have within that pension scheme. So again, for property making it a very attractive proposition when you're looking to try and grow wealth. Um, a lot of people look at their pension scheme and I'm sure most of you people will be looking at pension schemes and saying, I don't really want to touch that now because it's money that goes away forever. Now the unique thing about a, a SAS certainly, and it's the only pension that is able to do it, it's able to actually lend back to the business that set it up. So it's able to help grow and develop that business um, as well as helping the individual save for their pension uh, for their future. Now, what that means is if you've got some money that you've contributed into a pension arrangement, uh, most people look and say, well, that's gone till I hit 55. But if you've got a SAS arrangement, there's potential to lend half of that back to your business. So not only helping with cash flow, but your business is getting your corporations tax relief for making the initial contribution and then also getting 50 percent of that money back along with the tax relief. So that means that there's a little bit of a growth for your pension scheme and also a little bit of business relief there as well. Now, the idea of um, these kind of small schemes, it allows for the multi-member aspect of people pooling all their pensions together. Now, the pensions are initially operated on what we call a pooled fund. So what that means is if you've got six or seven people that have um, pension arrangements they've all transferred in, they get a percentage-based return based on what percentage of the money they've put in. So if someone has put in £100,000 and the fund is worth a million, they're going to be getting 10% of the return on whatever assets sit within inside that pension scheme. Um, looking kind of a little bit more specifically at property, and it's something that we're seeing a lot of people doing now, especially because the SAS pension arrangement, as Reese mentioned earlier, sits outside of your estate for IHT purposes. It means not only is your investment growth tax-free when you want to use it, but it means when you do eventually pass away, it can be passed on to family or, or second third generation family so we've got some people that rather leave it to their children rather leave it to grandchildren as well so it's, it's kind of skipping a generation um it, it stays in that tax efficient wrapper until they draw it out as well so there's no onus to have to draw anything out at all so if you've got wealth that you wanted to potentially shield a little bit from iht or wealth that you're not needing and you just wanted to pass it on in a tax efficient way sas is again are a very good vehicle for that especially if you're looking to keep something like property 
and not wanting to sell it in the short term. You're just looking to live off of that investment growth uh, over, over time. Um, I could speak for hours, but I think it's quite late. I don't really want to put people too much to sleep with pensions. So I think most people look very blankly and very, very sleepy. But what I will say is I've been doing SAS pensions now for 11 years. Um, I've covered personal pensions, occupational pensions. SAS pensions are definitely the most flexible form of pension. So if you've got a limited company and you want to do something a little bit more, uh, take a little bit more control of your own pension, have a word with Reese, and he'll be able to take you through how this kind of pension is certainly the best product on the market. And it's not something new. It's been around since the late seventies. It just unfortunately gets overshadowed by its uh, hip sister, the SIP. So um, everyone kind of looks at the SIP as the, the cool product that everyone wants, but the SASS has been around actually a lot longer than a, a SIP has. And it's also a much more flexible product as well. So uh, thank you very much for your time. James, thank you for that. Um, just as a, a by the by to anyone out there, um, myself and my husband, Keith, we actually have a SAS pension and um, absolutely love it. You can do so much with it. Honestly, I'd, I'd truly um, say to anyone to get in touch with Reese, and, and obviously between you both, they can speak to them. So, um, yeah, back to you, Dal, please. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, guys. That's really uh, very insightful and very useful. So, yeah, we just wanted to not just talk about property today and you know get some professionals on to talk about pensions and uh, tax as well. Um, so just back onto the UK, obviously, as mentioned, the government's got to build 300,000 homes a year, it's currently only building 151,000. So there's a shortage. We're also some, there's a rise in rental demand, something called generation rent uh, to invest or buy a property. Now, you know, back in the day, you could get a deposit in your early 20s. Now it's taking up to sort of your, your, your mid 30s. So what that means is there's this young population of 20 to 35 year olds. 30 year olds that need a place to stay. Um, and that's driving the demand in the, in the rental market. So again, as I said, average deposit now is around 48,000 to get on the ladder. And the average age for first time buyers risen to 33 years. Young people, as bleak as it sounds, are less likely to own property for a while now. Um, but what that means is there is a huge rental market. You know, you're not sitting in city centres like Liverpool or Manchester with in empty properties. This doesn't happen at the moment. We also have one of the best education systems in the world. So some of the major universities, you know, that attract students from all over. Luckily, things are getting back to normal now post the uh, COVID pandemic. And, you know, students are really looking forward back get to getting back into, uh, into university. So things like student accommodation is certainly something as an asset class or residential property close to universities in cities like Manchester uh, or Liverpool is something to consider. So we've got 18 of the top universities in the world. The UK has the second highest number of international students, which brings billions into the economy. And there's 485,645 students, international students who've enrolled uh, in the UK recently. On to, I just wanted to give you some quick examples on some current investment options. We, we've got a project in Preston, and why I like Preston is the prices are still relatively affordable. You can pick up a one bed from around 120 up to 135,000 pounds. There's a 434 million pound master plan for the city. So there's a huge regeneration of the, 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 the city centre, and it's also a major travel hub. So if you want to get to the Lake District or Liverpool or Manchester, you kind of, it's a major travel hub, which will be benefiting from the HS2, the high-speed rail. Again, one of the cities with 28% forecasted growth and a very young population, 36% of the population under the age of 25, uh, according to Price Waterhouse Coopers. There's also the two hundred million pound expansion of uh, the the university as well. So, where there's a lot of investments ongoing and uh, good prices, good value for money, these are the kind of areas we'd recommend. So, we've got two hundred high quality homes. The project's just recently been launched. You can choose from the best apartments. It's part of the Stony Gate Master Plan, um, and we've got one to three bedroom apartments with really good facilities, co-working space, uh, residence gyms. 
rooftop gardens, concierge bike storage. So construction's just started. You can invest from as little as £34,000. We project 81% return uh, over five years. It's an award-winning developer called Heaton Group. Deve development's fully funded, so very secure. Um, and there are incentives for cash buyers as well as mortgages available at completion. So just a quick run through on how that would work. If you were to buy a one bedroom apartment, um, we're off offering currently um, a 5% uh, discount for uh, certain payment plans or cash buyers. So that brings your price down to 130,000 pound. Your payment plan would be 5,000 deposits, 25% on exchange, 5% at completion, and then you'd be looking at a 70% mortgage uh, at completion. Um, so that's a small typo there. That should be 70%, I believe, but that's 91,506 pounds, which is 70%. So just as an example, you get a tenant in, we do all the lettings, we get, we get your tenant. You should be looking at 750 pound per calendar month. That's a annual uh, income of 9,000 pounds. Now, I've gone very worst case here on the mortgage at 4% because a lot of our overseas buyers are getting rates at about 3.5%, 4%. But as you know, UK investors, you can currently mortgage um, at record low borrowing rates, some, some people getting sort of 1.5%, 2%. So after your mortgage payments, you've then got a service charge for the upkeep of the building, uh, let, uh, management and letting fees, which is typically 6 to 8% of the gross income. And then you've got what's called the annual ground rent, um, which is on all leasehold property and should be 0.1%, which is in line with Council of Mortgage Lender requirements. So you won't have issues with mortgages. So all your outgoings, if you deduct your mortgage, your service charge, your annual management fee and your ground rent, you left with a cash flow positive of £3,860. So again, we talk about good debt, bad debt, and I know, I'm sure a lot of you have read the book uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that's what he refers to. You know, debt's not such a bad thing if if uh, if someone else is paying your debt on your property. So this is a five-year projection. If you were to hold and sell at year five, would be looking at with your rent a combined profit of around eighty-nine thousand pounds, which is a fairly healthy return on investment um, of two hundred twenty-nine percent over five years um, and a total net return per annum of around 46% based on capital deployed. So obviously these are for indicative purposes only and subject to market conditions and housing prices. That's just as an example. The second city I wanted to discuss today was Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool's number one for annual house price changes in 2021 at 9.3% according to Zoopla. There's been 6.5 billion pound worth of investment on the waterfront, uh, including a new shipping terminal and the whole of the waterfront at the Princess Docks is currently under, uh, undergoing redevelopment. It also has some of the highest yields uh, compared to any, any other city. So we're achieving yields of anywhere from six, sometimes up to 9%. Uh, Jones is saying JLL project 14.8% rental price growth in the next five years. So not only the price uh, prices going up, but rents are expected to go up as well. And again, Northwest and Liverpool are expected to increase by 28%. That's according to Savile's latest report. Um, and also, again, Zoopla is saying 5.8% rental price growth just in 2021 alone. So great time to get involved. Uh, we've got a development called Roscoe. It's a developer I've worked with for a number of years, very reliable. Construction's well underway. It's going to be completing in probably around January, February uh, next year. So not far off at all. It is a premium L1 postcode that's right in the city center near the university, the hospital and walking distance, four or five minutes to the city center and the train station. Uh, Award-winning developer, fully, fully managed again. And then just as a quick example, this is actually based just on a, a straightforward cash purchase. You'd be looking at a one bedroom apartment at 155,000 pound. Um, required cash obviously includes your stamp duty and your legal fees as well. So you need to consider that. Um, so yeah, we only need um, the developments fully funded. So they require 5,000 deposits, 25% on exchange, less the deposits, and then the balance at completion. Now your rents in Liverpool city centre, this will do very well because it is literally right in the city centre. Gross rents of £946. 
your annual uh, gross rent is £11,352. Service charge, again, for upkeep and maintenance, about £1.50 per square foot. So that's £597 plus your 8% management fee and your, your usual ground rent uh, of £150. So, yeah, 250 a leasehold, which is a very long lease. And that's your, your cash flow net rental per year of £9,696. So as we said earlier, you know, if you plan ahead and eventually you've got maybe four, five, six, even 10 properties by retirement, if you take that £10,000 times 10, it's a fairly decent annual uh, passive income uh, on the property. So again, projections, we expect um, uh, some very good growth in Liverpool in the next five years. We're being very conservative. But you can take your five-year income at £48,000, that's your rent. And then your exit sale at year five, we expect about £202,000. So you're looking at about £95,000 profit, um, which is a 59% return uh, over, over a five-year period. So close to completion, Liverpool City Centre. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to run that through you and show you how property can work. Um, whether you take a mortgage or you're buying cash, uh, you know, you get a tenant in. Um, and you can earn a 6% net yield. Um, the developer on this one also do sometimes offer assurances. So for the first two years, your rent will be assured uh, at a 6% net. Um, so effectively, uh, the, the rent's guaranteed in the contract, um, and they'll pay for the first two years, whether there's a tenant in situ uh, or not. This is a case study um, going back to the planning and long-term goals and strategies. Uh, one of our senior consultants, uh, Matt Harper Penman, um, he does a great job with uh, you know planning out a goal uh, for customers, not just buying or selling one property. So we had a, a client of ours, John uh, Westercott, uh, and his father Graham Westercott. Just as an example, John and Graham, they were a little bit lost. Obviously, they have their business, and but they didn't really have a defined strategy. So the first thing we did, we got a strategy in place for them to build a roadmap to allow them to walk towards their, their long-term goals. We, had to, we advised them to obviously have a diverse portfolio of city centre properties covering areas with the strongest growth according to Savills. So they've looked at properties in Liverpool, Manchester and Preston. Across 10 properties um, that, that uh, John and Graham that matched their profile, uh, the risk profile via residential and short stay they can achieve their goal of £10,000 per month. And this can be done over a seven year period. So um, obviously we need to take into think things like a consideration like tax and all of that, but they've bought three properties with us. Um, you know, it's going very well so far. Uh, goal one was £3,000 cash flow per month to cover living costs. And the second goal, which is a long-term goal we're working on is 10,000 cash flow per month uh, for their, uh, their retirement uh, through property. So yeah, that's it for me and I uh, hope we didn't go too long, Lynn. I know you like to normally try and keep it to an hour, but I felt there was some great value there. Uh, and uh, yeah, open up the floor to any any questions. Absolutely. So um, first of all, I've got to say a, a massive wow. We have um, run over on the actual presentation. We tried to keep that to an hour and then spend the last half an hour on Q&A. But um, we just felt that it was, you know, there's so much valuable information here. Um, so we wanted to keep going. So thank you, Dale and Reese, And of course, to James, too. Um, extremely informative, massive value and very much appreciated, I can assure you. So just to let you all know, if you've joined partway through, please don't worry. Um, just a reminder that you receive the recording via email um, over the course of the next sort of 24 hours. So you'll be able to watch it back. Um, and I'm sure you'll also um, take into account that um, something I didn't know, but Reese obviously knows some Spanish because I, I noticed the word problemo came out a few times there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're not going to invite you to take lessons off in for that, though. Don't worry. Okay. So, yes, please do stay on. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat. Um, and if you can save your questions for Dale or Reese, that would be very helpful. I've got a few coming through. Um, just before we go into the q and I just want to ask Dale. Dale, I know that we um, always have um, some freebies, so we'll we'll get to those just after the Q&A. Um, 
But if we can just go through those. So just to say, I've had quite a few people uh, say here that they, you know, they're a certain age, they've got a private pension worth amount, X amount, and um, they're not contributing to it anymore because they're in retirement age. So just to let you all know, rather than obviously um, speaking to each of you directly now, what we'll do is we'll arrange for Reese to actually make contact with you um, and he can speak to you at, on, a, on a personal one-to-one -one basis. So uh, we'll do that. Then I've just got a, another question here. Um, are there tax implications the same for foreigners? Ha I have both South African and EU passports. Okay. Great question. Um, I'd just like to clarify for the, the point of just clearing myself and for compliance at my end, I'm not a tax accountant. OK, I specialize in tax efficient investments. But my opinion on this is that the tax that um, you would be liable for depends on normally where you're domiciled and where you're resident. Um, there will be slight uh, differences depending on where you are in the world. And what's really important, especially for an international traveler that has got passports in different areas of the world, is that you seek the advice of a specialist, so an international tax expert that um can cover your regions it's really really important that you get the right advice same as in property so really important to have the right advice on property finances and also tax advice is, is crucial just on that one because i've uh, obviously i've got my british passport and also um south african now there is a dual taxation treaty between the uk and south africa so what that means some countries don't have a dual taxation treaty and you can end up getting double taxed but most commonwealth countries and in most country countries really usually have a dual taxation treaty which means you're not getting um uh, taxed twice if that makes sense but as as we said uh, we actually work with specialist tax advisors um, and we partnered with uh, a company called, uh, in particular, if, if you're from South Africa, a company called Sable Wealth or Sable International. We can put you in touch with them and they, they can explain to you, would it be better to buy a South African or if you're European passport from a tax efficiency point of view. So, again, not qualified or, or giving any financial advice, but we can point you in the right direction to get the necessary answer um, and buy in the best structure. Thank you. So um, lots of gratitude coming through as well, guys. Really interesting and informative. Um, lots to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad I joined. All those sorts of things coming through. Um, I've got one here. Um, what would you advise for a 60 year old who is stopping paying into a final salary pension as he's breaching the LTA? Great question. Really good question. Uh, one that is very typical of, of the sort of clients that I see day in, day out. Lifetime allowance is a huge issue. Um, and the problem here with trying to advise on a defined benefit pension and, and whether it's the right advice to keep money going into that or whether to take payment in lieu from the company, potentially sometimes depending on, on who you work for, is that it's really dependent on that specific individual's situation. OK, lifetime allowance is always to be avoided because you're chucking away money at that point. But what's crucial is to go through very meticulously the plan like we've detailed today to find out, OK, what what are the best options? Option one, two and three. What are the implications of them options? Are there any better solutions? Um, so for for the person that reached out. What I'll do, uh, and what I'll do for, for anybody in the audience today um, as a goodwill gesture to Fabric's audience is sit down with you, at least have uh, an hour of my time, you know, completely free for me to run through your options and give you a bit of food for thought. Um, if I can point you in the right direction and, and give, you, uh, give you some good advice, then that's, that's good enough for me. Thank you, Reese. Um, I think actually on that note, what I'm going to do here, I'm getting so many people asking for um, particularly, um, you know, advice from you, Reese. And, you know, would you do a one to one session here? So I think we'll we'll throw that into the freebies like you've offered. Thank you very much. So right. on that note, um, to be honest, I think what we'll do um, 
it is move on to the um, offers that we're giving Dale. So can you just um, brief us, please, on what we can offer the guys tonight? Yeah, happy to do so, Lynn. There was just one question I saw pop up. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and they said, um, is there any merit in setting up a specific property company, uh, limited company to purchase and own property? Now, we, um, we've touched on this before. We work with a company called Get Ground, and you can set up a limited company very easily online. You can manage all your accounts online. They're backed and supported by HMRC, and they're a tech-based tech company. So it costs a lot more than employing accountants. I think it's something like five or six hundred pound setup fee, and then a, a small uh, annual charge of around two hundred pounds to do your accounts. But there are benefits when it comes to um, having your property and a limited company with shares. When it comes to selling um, and also stamp duty, there can be tax benefits twofold on inheritance tax. Uh, and also tax relief on things like stamp duty and so forth. So without going into too much detail, uh, we can put you in touch with Liam at GetGround and he can then go, go through uh, on a presentation with you what the benefits are of buying with a limited company to see if that's going to be um, uh, more suitable for you. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and I've got a couple more actually just come in um, at the end here. So um, a big, couple of things. So I'm being asked, um, should we not be considering diversification to overseas investments, especially in this post-Brexit world? Um, that's the first one, Dale, if you'd like to, or Reese, if you, I can see you're about to jump in there. It's a fire ahead, yeah, Reese. Yeah, sorry, I was bursting at the seams there. So it's a really <laughs> good question. And actually one that some of the audience might be thinking as well, probably because I haven't explained myself well enough as I was trying to ramble through all of them points. So, so let me address this. With UK investments, the only one that is solely based in the UK for UK companies is the Venture Capital Trust. And it's because you get the tax relief from the UK government. It would be unwise for the UK government to say, we're going to give you tax relief to invest in companies in Germany or the USA because it wouldn't bring any value to our economy, if that makes sense. As, as for the rest of the investments, the pensions, the ISAs, the general investment accounts, um, all of them sort of different investments, although the wrappers are in the UK, so the vehicle, the ISA, the, the GIA and the pension, you can invest anywhere in the world into them. So you could invest in stocks in, you know, South Africa, US, um, Far East, anywhere, anywhere that you want to be. Um, just because they're based in the UK doesn't mean that you're only held to having UK investments within them. So if you are an offshore investor and you're looking at property in the UK, having a diversified portfolio throughout the globe is going to be really important. Um, if you are in, I mean, I can't specifically advise for anybody due to uh, complications with, with law in the UK for anybody that is currently situated in a different country. As soon as your feet touch UK soil, I can give you full advice, um, but my recommendation for that is if the person that's asking that is abroad, then definitely go and seek somebody that's recommended or somebody that you followed um, that's in the finance space that can give you good advice about global investments, as well as considering UK property with Fabric. Thank you. Um, and another one here, besides property, what other investment recommendations can you advise so as to obtain or create an income? Ooh, just, yeah. sorry, just, just one, one thing on the previous question. I used to work in international property as well, so I sold property all over, really. Brazil, Italy, Egypt, uh, all over in emerging markets. Now, post-recession, those markets didn't perform very well, and we found a lot of people gravitating towards the UK as a safe haven because of the demand from tenants and the shortage of supply. So there are markets out there, you know, it's nice to have an apartment maybe in a villa in Thailand or, or Bali as a holiday home that will give you a bit of income as well. But I think the UK really, especially in this economic uncertainty, like we said earlier, it's a safe haven for uh, investors. But yeah, we, we're always looking at international markets as well. And if it does, you know, things do ever pick up in certain places, we would definitely look, but... Um, with caution, of course, because we do feel some of those markets have slightly higher uh, risk than the UK. 
Lovely, thank you. So, yeah, just moving on, um, you know, besides property, what other investment recommendations can you advise so as to um, obtain or create an income? Really, really good question. I hope you don't mind me taking this one down. Um, so it depends on the level of contribution. It depends when you want to draw down. So when you want to access that money, if you're investing for retirement, there are many vehicles that can generate an income. Um, specifically, if you're looking at generating a monthly income now, there are a lot of uh, investments that will give you a monthly dividend in terms of you know, certain stocks and certain equities. There, there are different options, I know, within the alternative investment space that can kick up. Nothing really, in my opinion personally, compares to property if you're looking for a reliable source of monthly income that isn't going to get shifted too much in a high-risk area. Um, but there are definitely other options. If you're in the UK and you're specifically looking for income generating investment options, then it's something we'd have to explore further. The reason I say that is because every individual has their own perception of risk. There will be on a risk spectrum. Some people will be very cautious and adverse to risk. Some people will be willing to take a bet. And there are different products that align with different people's attitude towards risk. So in order to find out what would be specifically applicable to you, my, my advice would be to take, take the hour, um, if, you, if you are based in the UK, for us to discuss a bit further about your specific interest and, and see if we can match anything up there. Thank you. Um, I literally am, everyone, just going to ask this one last question now because I'm always conscious of, of people's time. Um, so just one last question, and Dale, this is for you. Uh, my wife and I have found this webinar very valuable. Thank you so much. Um, when is the next webinar and when is the likely, and what is the likely topic? Great, uh, great question. So um, we, we will be holding a webinar every, every month. So the next one will be within the next month, hopefully mid next month. We'll, we'll let you know. And the next webinar is likely to be, and it could change, but it's likely to be around the what I touched on earlier, which is alternative asset classes such as uh, holiday accommodation and short-term lets. So Perfect. the vacation market, um, we've got quite an exciting product coming up. Um, which we're busy working on. Uh, and yes, yeah, so it'll be around that, but each webinar, I'll also bring everyone up to speed on the latest market news as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. Excellent, thank you. So, right, let, let's move on now. Um, we will get back to all of your other questions, as I say, um, with our sales guys um, over the next couple of days. So Dale, please let us know what free gifts we're giving away this evening. Yes, thanks. So we've actually put together a um, how to uh, invest in property for retirement, um, which includes our top secrets uh, and recommendations. So that's a free um, guide that we will uh, provide you um, for a read. And also the um, what was the other one? The <laughs> Uh, so the other one is a free consultation with one of our senior consultants. As I said, they've all got many, many years experience. We find it very useful these days to book book a, a meeting on Zoom because they can actually share screen and run you through everything. Uh, but a phone call would be fine if you prefer the phone. Uh, and then the next things, obviously, uh, we'll feel free to speak to Reese to, uh, to discuss pension planning. Um, we can book that for you uh, as well. So that's it for now. And uh, if you're interested in buying property, though, get in touch. And we've always got some sort of incentives. You know, prices are direct from the developers. And we'll make yeah. sure that you, uh, you get looked after and, and get the best possible deal. Okay, so I want to break that down, make it all easy for you. So if you um, would like the guide on how to retire early through property investment guides, um, or not through the guides, but with the addition of the guide to help you, um, please do just put guide in the chat now and we'll, we'll get that off to you by email. Um, if you would like a one-to-one -one strategy session with a property consultant of ours to discuss how we can help you achieve your goals. Please put strategy in the chat now. And thirdly, if you'd like a one-to-one -one call with Reese, um, then please put Reese in, in the chat. 
And um, to make it even easier, if you'd like all three of these free gifts, please put bundle in the in the chat now. So finally, if you've got any more questions, please do contact your dedicated property consultant at Fabric. Each one of them, as Dow said earlier, has a minimum of 10 years experience in the property industry, and they'll be more than happy to jump on a call or a Zoom with you. So Dale and Reese and, and James there, um, on behalf of absolutely everyone here, a huge, huge thank you for your time. Um, I appreciate your, your valuable time you spent with us this evening massive knowledge as well hugely appreciated so thank you all again everyone for being with us this evening truly appreciated stay safe stay well and we'll see you all again next time okay thank you thanks, thanks thank Reece. You, thanks james bye-bye thank, thank, thank you, you all you've been brilliant bye-bye cheers thank bye. you lynn bye-bye bye-bye